Hi my lovelies, it's Ethany and welcome to First Impressions Friday on my channel. And this week I am excited to share with you the Spacious Tarot by Carrie Mallon and I am actually not sure off the top of my head who the artist is but it says uh, Rygat. I'm really, really sorry if I have mispronounced your surname. I backed this deck on Kickstarter when it came out. I've been following Carrie's um, progress creating this deck. Carrie and I have worked together before and I have mucho respect for her and I adore her. I think she's an absolutely lovely person. I was really excited for the Spacious Tarot and everyone was. It, it did extremely well. Um, I know that the first edition, this is the first edition from Kickstarter. I received this late last year, but I have had a massive backlog of decks to get to. So it has taken me a bit of a hot second to get to it. This is the Kickstarter version. I know there is a second edition coming out. I saw that on Instagram the other day and I got um, the little bag as well, the Spacious Tarot. I'm, I'm sure that was probably something for uh, like a Kickstarter stretch goal. Oh, and some stickers. We've got the Hermit. And this is really beautiful. A mushroom moon, full moon, mushroom moon. I love me my stickers. I have more stickers than I humanly know what to do with, but I do, do really love them. So I'm really uh, stoked to finally be able to get through this uh, and have a look at the deck. So let's jump on over and discover the Spacious Tarot together. Alrighty, so now we're going to discover the spacious tarot together. I've just taken the plastic off because I don't want to waste my time on the screen doing that and I'm sure you don't want to watch me struggle with plastic. And uh, we have the little bag and those little stickers that I showed you before. Loving a living for them. How about that one? The artwork is so stunning. So I'm just going to pop that up there. And then this beautiful matte box, this blue and rainbow. This space is for you. Then we have the book, the box inside. It's a lovely box. If you have the um, anything from Baba Studios, so like My Victorian Romantic came in this kind of box. They're beautiful boxes and they are very luxe feeling. And then the deck came with a little clasp. It is a satin finish lamination. I'd say the cardstock is 350. Yeah, I'd say that's 350. Uh, the edges uh, normal so you can color them and the backs are a almost like a cosmic confetti cake <laughs> you know the the hundreds and thousands and the blue and now we're going to go through the guidebook um, together after okay so I believe that this deck was created much like how I do my deck creations, which is I have the idea, the design for each of the cards. Sorry, that's anything you hear in the background, that's Thor, um, who loves to play every time I put the camera on. Um, so I draw the design that I want and then I send it over to the artist to be completed. So we have the fool. Oh my gosh, the dog, he gets it's the loudest things. I love this magician. So gorgeous. Oh, high priestess. I can see, I mean, I knew from the Kickstarter, which, um, I backed that this was going to be, well, I knew from actually watching the deck unfold uh, that it was going to be super popular and it is just so gorgeous. So the, the deck size is regular tarot, the Empress. The Emperor. Love that poppy, that tall poppy. 
the Hierophant, the Standing Stones. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people who like people decks. I'm one of them. The Lovers. It's gorgeous. I love people decks. I get a lot out of their, um, their body language, the way they're interacting with the environment, what they're looking at, all that kind of stuff. And then there are some people who really prefer to read with decks that are not, that don't have any people in it, that they have either animals or landscapes or both or flowers. And I love them too. And the chariot. I like that. I've been whitewater rafting a couple of times, which I absolutely love. And uh, yes, being able to navigate that is quite the thing. And also often a team effort, unless you're in a, a one person vessel and you know what you're doing. Uh, so I can see how this is very popular for, for people who it would be very suited for people who love to work with the deck that is the hermit, it's gorgeous. That is not people centric. Um, Wheel of Fortune. I don't really, I mean, like, I would love to work with this deck. Like, the Wild Unknown for me, I can't get anything out of it um, in regards to reading with it. I have to very much rely on my own knowledge of the cards. Uh, and bring my memory and everything that I've learned to, over the many years of reading the cards into the reading. I think Kim Kranz's art is exceptional. It's so stunning. It is such a beautiful deck. I own all versions of that deck, so it's not as if I don't like it. I just find that I can't read with it. So I'm going to be very interested to see if I can read with this deck, although I'm getting quite a lot from it already. It's like that fire and the ice and the steam in between dropping down and reaching up like there's a lot in it that's it feels more alive whereas I feel you know with the wild unknown it feels a little more like photos taken of something um I don't know it's just one of those things um that it's like all art speaks to people in different ways and the way that my tarot Language, I guess, speaks to me is, is going to be different from the way that it speaks to everybody else. The devil, beautiful tower card. So, that was kind of a ramble, wasn't it? <laughs> it? I get why people, and I know why it's so popular, and a lot of people get so much out of it, which just goes to show that there is a deck out there for everybody, and that not everyone reads the same. And that's a wonderful, amazing thing. The star, the moon. Oh, that's a moon card. Of course it is. That little sticker. Gorgeous. The sun, of course, is a beautiful sunflower. So, yeah, I guess it's like, do you? Find what deck what works for you. This is really, the artwork is so gorgeous. They both um, Carrie and Annie have done such an amazing job. It's so stunning. And the world. So yeah, <laughs> plus I guess, oh, I love the constellations of the, the four um, zodiac signs. Um, yeah, you just got to find what works for you, the ace. But I love, I loved watching this deck come to life and I like all but slammed the back now. <laughs> um, button on Kickstarter. Two of Pentacles, so beautiful. Oh, that little hummingbird. Oh, I love that. This might be one of my favorite cards. Oh, there's two hummingbirds. My finger was on one. And um, yeah, I feel like I can get quite a lot out of this already. Three pentacles. That's what makes this community and the expression of the tarot and the reading of the cards so spectacular. Um, you know, some people read completely intuitively I believe that um, you know the tarot does have a system and it does have its own uh, meanings behind it and its structure and all that kind of stuff but it doesn't mean that you can't use the tarot and just read the tarot intuitively that's gorgeous too um, oh B <laughs> this the eight of Pentacles oh my god I love it <laughs> um, and then there are people who read, we read the cards for lots of different reasons and lots of different ways. And that's just one of the most beautiful things about this, um, this art form and this 
this way of being. So I just, uh, I always love getting a new deck and trying out a new, oh my gosh, so cute. So we have the child, the explorer, the guardian, the explorer is the knight, the child is the page, the guardian is the queen, and the elder is the <clears throat> king. And we have bears, bears. So yeah, I'm looking forward to using this. I feel like this is going to go straight on to the, it's going straight to the pool room. Go watch the, uh, oh crap, no, I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> it's an Australian movie, not the sanctuary. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, it's going to bug me now. Um, it might go, this one is going to probably go straight to the reading my reading altar for my swords, which I really do need to do a altar, <laughs> a tour by the swords. I've got all of these like little creative things that I want to do. I've got all these blog post series. I've got all of this like really like all these fun things to share with you. And it's like, I've got so many deadlines to get the four decks that I'm working on this year done that everything else has become secondary. So I have been like riding my little butt off. Um, every stage of production is dealt with by me and my, my sister and I. So it is, it is so busy most of the time here. So I've had to like pump the brakes a little bit. Oh, I like the nine of swords. Um, on all the other little things I want to get done, not to mention everything else I'm working on. So um, I apologize for the the lack of blog posts and, you know, summer school's coming, Tara summer school's coming up and we just got crazy stuff going on here. So um, yeah, but I'm glad that they're nearly done, these, these uh, creations, uh, because it's been a long time. So we have the crows now, which I, the crows here is so crazy. Getting back to this beautiful deck and not me rambling. Um, the crows here in Vancouver are crazy. They are really good at mimicking voices. And I've heard them say some really very full on stuff. Um, you feel like you're listening to a human being. It's so crazy. Uh, they are everywhere here. Yeah, but we're going to get back to talking about this deck, so I apologize about that. But, um, Ace of Wands. Oh, this is this color skate. Oh, beautiful. Mwah. Reminds me of an Orosoma bottle. Three of Wands. So gorgeous. The four. So, this is sort of mimicking uh, a little bit of a pip deck. So some of the cards, so like the Five of Wands, um, it does sort of resemble the way that the Five of Wands is stacked or shown in the Right Away Smith, but it is a little bit more pippish. So for those people who really are so drawn to this artwork and how can you not be, um, there might be a little bit of like book learning or you may want to have your... Um, the guidebook next to you while you learn or you could do what I do with decks like this that I mean for me I'm getting quite a bit out of uh, a lot of this artwork but um, I also bring as I mentioned before all of the years experience I have with reading the cards and understanding their meanings in both the Thoth, the right away and the Marseille, the numerology and all that kind of stuff uh, to the cards or you could just go with it yourself and, and read with it intuitively. Sometimes I kind of wish I could go back to the beginning. So we have salamanders here. I love salamanders. Oh my gosh. I love frogs and uh, lizards and snakes. And I love frogs. Oh my God, I love frogs. And salamanders and like little oh, amphibious little things. Am I a weirdo? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> I think they're so cute. Um... That's beautiful, the Guardian of Wands. So anyway, as I was going on about, um, I wish sometimes I could go back to the beginning when everything was kind of fresh. And I, I remember going to my first uh, official 
tarot class, which was with Gail. Hey, Gail, um, who I love and adore, uh, and we are good good friends. And uh, she taught me. I did psychic development with her. I did uh, a number of psychic development classes with her, and courses and tarot. And she was my first official. I love that. It's beautiful. That's gorgeous too. The little cards. Oh, beautiful. And I remember being being in that class and we had to do a lot of intuitive reading of like what do you see in the card a lot of gestalt kind of readings and I wish I could kind of go back to the beginning where I was consuming so much tarot media and so much tarot and just absorbing it all for the first time does that make sense like it's gorgeous wanting to be in that space where I love that it's like the, the growing out of that big one um, yeah, going, going to a space where it's all new and fresh and because I think sometimes having a lot of instilled knowledge and things that you know, you have to kind of consciously put that aside when you're working with something new, which is why I love new decks like this, because it forces me to look at the tarot from a new perspective. Um, there are quite a few creators who create beautiful decks. Um, oh, that's so gorgeous. That have really pushed me to to learn different aspects of the cards and sometimes that that absolutely sticks with me I've said this before it sticks with me so that's so gorgeous it sticks with me a little koi fishies which I adore beautiful this deck is so gorgeous I feel like I've had more of a rambling conversation through this deck <laughs> so you could probably have just like put mute <laughs> Put it on mute if you didn't want to listen to me <laughs> talk about other stuff. Um, what can I say? I'm a Gemini. <laughs> you all knew what you were signing up for when you started to press play on this video. So the the cardstock is stunning. The finish is really, really gorgeous. We're going to give it a bit of a shuffle and then we're going to have a look at the guidebook. Shuffle's lovely. I know that there is a second edition. I think I mentioned this in the first part of this coming out, uh, which, yay. pentacles gorgeous okay so we're gonna pop that there and have a look through so we have concepts by Carrie and Annie so Annie did help with the artwork written by Carrie Mellon illustrated by Annie like it I hope I'm saying that right I'm really really sorry if I'm not <laughs> So then we have um, a note on gender, sorry, from top to bottom, about a note from the creators about tarot, bonding with the spacious tarot, components of the deck, a note on gender, how to read tarot, a spacious tarot spread, a note on reversals, and then we go into the meanings. Oh, gorgeous. About the tarot. Bonding, understanding the major arcana minor numbered cards so numerology which is really fun. I like that's a great book by the way every dead hero understanding the court note on gender how to read the cards spacious tarot spread Note on reversals. Okay. And then the card meaning. So we get, we'll have a look at a major. We get uh, the full potential leap adventure. And that's cool. We have here like the majors, pentacles, swords, wands, cups. Easy to find. I think that's a really great idea. Um, we're going to pentacles and 
10. So stability and establishment in the Ten of Pentacles connects to a powerful grounding force. This tree trunk is solid, firm and established. Keep a long-term course events in mind. A stable tree does not appear overnight. <laughs> Makes sense with how much I'm working on at the moment. This tree is a result of a seed that was tended to and given plenty of time and space to develop. Amazing. Um, doo -doo -doo, and in turn, ask what you can do today to ensure stability for the future. I've got a lot, uh, that makes a lot of sense, even though I wasn't really, I guess, thinking for a reading for myself. I'm doing a lot of long-term stuff this year. Um, last two years have been a very much about a building uh, and getting a lot of stability. And so that makes an awful lot of sense. Lots and lots of, lots of senses. This is a stunning deck. Congratulations to both Carrie and Annie on a successful Kickstarter on a beautiful deck. It is quite exquisite. I'm so happy for you both. I love it when um, my colleagues and friends do so well and succeed. I think it's just the most beautiful. They're all upside down. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I will place, sorry, I'm still a little bit sick. I will place the, uh, dis in this description box below where you can find this deck and uh, support both of these incredible creators. And as always, pumpkins, thank you so much for watching.